Welcome everybody, my name is Syed and welcome to Claydesk. Welcome everybody, my name is Syed and welcome. Do you want to go first? Of course I want to go first, Syed, it's my turn. I mean, come on, why do you have to do this every single time? It's my turn. No, it's mine. I want to be talking about some very, very important things here like the DevOps tool chain and DevOps phases and life cycle and which tools fit in which life cycle. Let me go first. I'll do the same here. I'm gonna talk about the DevOps phases. Let's toss a coin if that makes some sense. Let's do that. I don't want to toss a coin. Come on. Come on. I'm not gonna help you with that Jenkins deployment and I'm not even gonna help you with that scripting. So it's my turn, let me go first. Hey, 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 come on, come on, come on. I'm learning scripting too, okay? So hey, all right, thank you. All right, let's, sorry about that guys. Welcome everybody, my name is Syed. And of course, with me is also Syed. I'm gonna be talking about the first three phases of DevOps along with some important tool chains, right? Or tools that you can use. And then he's gonna be covering, of course, the last three phases and the tool chains, right? So we stay even, right? All right, perfect. So let's get started. I'm gonna be talking about, and of course, if you're new to this channel, please subscribe and smash that like button and the bell notification because Claydesk eLearning, we teach a little over 1 million students online. We have all kinds of latest technology courses at claydesk.com or on YouTube right here, it's free. So, hey, be my guest. But today, we're gonna to be talking about the DevOps phases and of course the important tools. So don't miss this, watch till the end, very, very important, especially if you're in DevOps or you want to be in DevOps and start your career. Let's talk about DevOps. So when it comes to DevOps tool chain, organizations should look for tools that improve collaboration, right? Reduce context switching, introduce automation, and then leverage observability and monitoring so that they can ship better software and faster. Now, there are two primary approaches to DevOps toolchain, right? All-in-one toolchain and, of course, open toolchain. The all-in-one solution provides a complete solution that usually does not integrate third-party tools. An open toolchain, on the other hand, can be customized you know, for two, uh, teams and you can use many, many tools. So regardless of the type of DevOps toolchain, you can the DevOps process needs to use the right tools to address the key phases of the DevOps lifecycle. That's exactly what I'm talk about. So let's start with the first plan, right? And then the next is build. Third is continuous integration and deployment. Then we have monitor, we have operate, and then we have continuous feedback. I'm gonna be talking about the first three, and then Syed is gonna be talking about the last three, right? So let's talk about the first plan, right? Very important. So the goal is to allow development and operations teams to break the work down into smaller manageable chunks. Remember Agile, right? For quicker deployments. And this allows you to learn from users sooner and helps optimize the product based on the feedback. So you need to look for tools that provide sprint planning, issue tracking, and allow collaboration, right? Such as Jira is a great example. Companies use that all the time. They also use Slack as a tool. And other great practice is continuously gathering feedback from users and organizing into actionable inputs, right? And then prioritizing those actions for your development teams. So you should also look for tools that encourage asynchronous brainstorming, right? And that's what you wanna call it. And it's important that everyone can share and comment on anything. Ideas, strategies, goals, requirements, roadmaps, and documentation. And do not forget about integrations and feature flags, by the way, very important. So whatever you decide to scope your feature or project itself, it should be converted into user stories and your development backlog. So feature flags are like statements in the code base that enable teams to turn features on and off, and that's helpful. Next phase is build, that's number two. You can either use Kubernetes or Docker as far as containerization is concerned, right? So, while Puppet and Chef tools are primarily within operations, developers use open source tools like Kubernetes and, and Docker to provision individual deployment environments. So, coding against virtual replicas, for example, also helps more work done. So, let's talk about infrastructure as a code. So developers create modular applications, right? Because they're more reliable and maintainable. So why not extend that thinking to an IT infrastructure? 
And this can be difficult to apply at times to systems because they're always, always changing. So we get around that by using code for provisioning. Terraform tool is a great, great example, right? Check out my full course on Terraform right here on YouTube. So infrastructure as a code simply means that reprovisioning, you know, faster than repairing. So more consistent and reproducible small chunks of code shipping effectively, right? So similar configuration within the development environment, for example, or provisioning code can be applied or reapplied into a known baseline that you set, right? It can be stored in version control, for example. It can be tested, incorporated into continuous integration and peer reviewed also. So the institutions basically or enterprise companies, they use these tools all the time and they, of course they keep and manage their internal documentation. So what emerges is basically a repeatable process, automated process and reliable you know, systems basically. So it's important to have source control of your code. And source control tools help store the code in different chains. So you can, you know, see every change and collaborate more easily by sharing that change. So rather than waiting on change approval before deployment to production environment, you can improve code quality and then throughput with peer reviews done by a pull request, for example. So a pull request, you simply ask, right? And pull requests tell your team about changes you pushed to the development branch in your repository. So now your team can review the proposed changes and discuss modifications before integrating into the main master pipeline, for example, right? So pull requests increase the quality of the software that results in less bugs, less incidents, which reduces operational costs and results in operational efficiency. So source control tools definitely should integrate with other tools as well, which allows you to you know, integrate different parts of code development and delivery. And Git is a very, very good example. And this allows you to tell you, you know, what is running in production. So for example, if something happens, an incident occurs, the code can be retrieved to shed light on the incident and be done with it. Next phase is continuous integration and delivery. That's three, right? Jenkins is, is pretty popular, right? Circle CI is another tool. Bitbucket are among the popular within organizations. And Jenkins definitely tops the list, by the way. Continuous integration, let's talk about it, right? It's basically a practice of checking the code to a shared repository several times a day and then testing it each time. That way, you're basically automatically detecting problems early. Fix them when they're easiest to fix and then, of course, roll out new features to your users as early as possible. So code review by pull request, by the way, requires branching, right? whether it's private branching or developers use their own branches that you can set up, right? Because that's fewer and faster branches are helpful, you know, and that helps you maintain the code base and maintain automation. So look for tools that automatically apply tests to development branches and give you the option to push to main master branch, right? Once they're successful. So along with that, you get continuous feedback through real time chat alerts, you know, maybe Slack or other tools, right? All right, let's talk about the test, right? Testing. So, of course, there, there are many, many requirements for testing your entire code within the pipeline, right? And that's a requirement from the management as well. But for the DevOps tool chain, automation is an essential, essential function, right? Automated testing, by the way, pays off, guys, because it speeds up your development and testing cycles in the long run. And in a DevOps environment, it's important for another reason which is awareness. So test automation can definitely increase software quality, reduce risk by doing it early and often. And development teams can execute automated tests repeatedly over and over again. And that covers several areas like UI testing, security scanning, or load testing. They also yield reports and trend graphs that help you identify risk areas. And that really is a fact of life because in software development, you get a lot of bugs. You can't mitigate what you cannot anticipate, right? So definitely do your operations team your favor because they want to be able to look with you, right? So look for tools that support wall boards, maybe Kanban boards are helpful if you're into Agile, and that helps, right? 
So these tools are helpful when you're talking about testing, automation, and then exploratory testing as well. Deployment dashboards is very popular, by the way. So as a DevOps engineer, you'll be tasked to maybe create a dev you know, a dashboard where you can, you know, change test, deployment, uh, into upcoming releases all into one place, right? So the last thing anyone needs before release is a long meeting to report on status. So this is where release dashboards come in and very, very handy. So for tools with a single dashboard integrated with your code repository and deployment tools, for example, right? Find something that gives you full visibility on all branches, builds, pull requests, and deployment warnings all in one place, right? An example would be maybe AWS Code Pipeline or Jira Service Management, right? So let's talk about automated deployment briefly. So there's no magic recipe here, right? It's just a matter of fine-tuning all these tools, right? But by converting operations into a command scripts or creating scripts, which is also another essential, essential job for a DevOps engineer to automate all these processes, right? So you can use variables, for example, within your scripts so you don't make mistakes and you're not hard coding scripts, right? So use variables, create modules, right? And Terraform, again, like I mentioned earlier, it helps quite a bit because Terraform is basically a very, very powerful infrastructure as a code software. And try automating deployments to your lowest level of your environment first, where you'll be using automation most frequently, and then replicate all the way up to production. And if nothing else, by the way, this exercise definitely would highlight the differences between your environments in gen that generates a list of tasks for standardizing them, right? And as a bonus, by the way, standardizing deployment through automation reduces server drift between environments. Here's a pro tip. So, Next three phases, I'm gonna have Saya talk about these, right? Because he, he wanted to go first. So, yeah. All right, Saya, it's your turn, so thank you. Thank you, finally it is my turn, all right. So, by the way, I'm learning shell scripting and it's not that difficult. You just need a little bit of practice and patience, right? All right, so we know that DevOps can be best understood that bridges the gap between the software development in the, and the IT operations together, right? By bringing both of these extremes to one, there will be definitely a better responsible team of individuals who would respond to any situation according to, you know, any problem that occurs, right? Rather than waiting for, you know, things to happen. So first, let's take a look at the tools and find the usages, right? I'm gonna talk about the next three phases, right? Like application monitoring or monitoring. So. And of course, I'm gonna continue on with the rest of the phases as well. So I'm gonna be talking about first the monitoring, right? Which, yeah, he didn't mention, so it's my turn. I'm super excited. So the first tool is pager duty, right? And that's really, really helpful. And there are many, many other tools, right? Uh, within DevOps, but pager duty is an operations performance platform that is created to improve the reliability and also the performance of the operations team itself and the capabilities like alert monitoring, on-call scheduling, escalation policies, and last but not the least, the incident monitoring to fix problems within the app. So with these timely alerts that are received within PagerDuty, the operations team can quickly, quickly can detect, right, all of these issues and resolve from the development environment to the production environment. So it has a fabulous, fabulous um, interface and the learning service. So yeah, it, it helps. It, it's pretty common too. Another tool is Kibana, by the way, right? It is also an open source analytics tool, right? Also a visualization tool specifically designed to work in conjunction with Elasticsearch. So the use of Kibana can be, is basically the search view, for example. It interacts with the data that stores internally that the Elasticsearch indices, right? So performing advanced data analysis, also visualization of your data can be simply done in the form of charts, tables, and maps, and that's pretty, pretty powerful. Another tool is Elasticsearch, by the way. It's important, so I wanna talk about it, right? And that tool is developed in Java, right? So it, this application is totally scalable and also a data analysis tool in itself. 
So data generation within the current world scenario is just humongous, right? So there's big data, there's so many data with social media data, the actual you know, company data itself. So such data that is generated from all these mediums is like big data, right? And it can be unstructured, scattered all over the place, right? So what this tool would do is Elasticsearch is an awesome tool, by the way, that is developed to deal with these kind of issues with unstructured data or big data, right? All right, next phase is operate. Let's talk about that. So many options are available, such as App Dynamics is a good tool, New Relic is a good tool, Negio, Splunk, Sumo Logic, and many, many more are available. So the application and server performance monitoring there are basically two types of monitoring that should be automated. First is server monitoring and then application performance monitoring. So if you are looking at, let's say, you know, manually hitting your API for testing, for example, is good. But to understand the overall health of the application and environments, you definitely need some good tool software that is listening to the data 24-7, right? And ongoing observability is a key capability for successful DevOps teams, by the way. So you need to look for tools that integrate with, let's say, you know, with your group chat client that alerts go directly to teams or dedicated room for incident response. And for example, problem tracking, incident change, keys to unlocking collaboration between DevOps teams is certainly making the same work is consistent, right? So what happens when incidents are reported? Are they really linked and traceable to software problems? When changes are made, are they linked to releases, right? So nothing, uh, that's really the devs and the ops, and that's really the blocking mechanism when these two teams are not interacting together, right? So these tools, and look for tools that keep incident changes and problems and software projects on one platform, right? So you can identify and fix problems faster. And finally, of course, we have the continuous feedback. Definitely, you could use Slack, for example, or Jira service management. Both of these tools are pretty powerful. And customers are already telling you, by the way, whether you've built the right software or not. You just have to listen to the, your clients, right? So continuous feedback includes both the culture and the process to collect feedback regularly and then tools to drive insights from that particular feedback. So continuous feedback practices include like collecting and reviewing NPS data, surveys, bug reports, could be tickets, even tweets, right? So within the DevOps culture, everyone on the product team has access to user comments because they help guide from everything from release planning to testing sessions, right? So you need to look for applications that integrate your chat tool with your favorite survey you know, platform for NPS style feedback, for example. So Twitter, Facebook can also be integrated with these chat for real-time feedback, by the way, if that's what your enterprise is using. But if you need to have a deeper look into the data, it's worth investing in a social media management platform also. But that, again, depends on your, and, you know, the, the requirement for the organizations. So but it's important to analyze and incorporate the feedback in, in the short term because it's more efficient in the long run, right? Because you are going to be integrating all these features. All right, so I'm gonna conclude here with all these phases, right? DevOps is, is, is a mindset, it's a culture. So with all these three phases within DevOps, right? And all these tools that myself and Syed, of course, has discussed are important. So if you have any questions, and of course, post in the discussion area, and if you're new to the channel of course please subscribe and yeah smash that like button and the bell notification so you get notified every single time we come up with the latest and greatest video you know informing you educating you about tools within the devops framework my name is syed thanks for watching and we'll see you next time